All right, what up YouTube? In this video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to make a drone or a helicopter or really any type of aircraft. I have made a video in the past where I demonstrate how to make an airplane using a sort of similar method. However, this method in particular focuses more so on vertical thrust than it does on like forward or horizontal thrust. But again, this method can be applied to any any type of aircraft really. As you will see, this is quite a simple design, but again, this is just meant to be kind of the groundworks for any type of like drone or helicopter vehicle that you might want to create. Now, there are a couple things that you are going to want, and the first one is going to be Smart Snap or whatever you call this thing where you have this little grid that shows up. And this just helps you to keep your center of gravity well centered and you know basically just allows you to precisely mirror all your positioning of objects in order to keep your aircraft balanced because with not so much with planes i mean it's important it's important with planes but with drones and helicopters it's especially important to keep the balance because you know balance is just a really overall important part of the performance of the aircraft and the second thing you're going to want is the weight tool again it's not 100 percent necessary but it is gonna make the process a whole lot easier. It just allows you to identify the overall weight of your craft because the overall weight of your craft is what is going to affect the amount of thrust that you're gonna need on this thing. So without further ado, I'm gonna show you guys how to make one from scratch. Now you're gonna have to bear with me because I have only made this thing once. I kind of just came up with this design recently. So we'll see if I can replicate it. But the first thing you're going to need here is going to be in the PHX Builder Pack. And it's the M4 robotics part here. This is going to be the main chassis for our drone. The second one is kind of hidden. And you're going to have to go to this little browse thing down here. You're going to go to Games, Gary's Mod. And here you're going to find the rest of the PHX extended stuff. And here in the XQM folder is where you're going to find a whole bunch of plane and helicopter parts. And right here, you're going to click your helicopter medium, and we're going to get four of these helicopter propellers here. Once we have these ready, we're going to get the motor tool. And my previous design, I had this set to plus and enter. Uh, this kind of doesn't matter, but I'm actually going to set this to the same button that I'm going to set the base like thrust level to. And you'll see what I mean here in a second. We're just going to set it to zero and... For backwards, you're not really going to be running them backwards, so you're just going to set this to a key that's kind of out of the way and that you're not going to be pressing. You can set it to like scroll lock or something, that's a good one. And we're going to set it as high as it can go, that's 10,000. I think you can type in more to make it go faster, you could try that if you want. You basically just want this to spin as fast as you can get it to spin. Now there is a special order of doing this, and I'll try to post a picture in the video of the orientation for drone propellers and I don't know how much it actually matters in the realm of Gary's mod and the source engine but the way you want it is you want the opposing corners to match in rotation and then you want the other corners to be the opposite clockwise clockwise and then the front right is counterclockwise and the rear left is counterclockwise as well so these are going to be our clockwise propellers and we're just going to try to put that as close to the center as we can because again the more balanced this is, the more happy we will be in the end. So boom, there's those. What we're gonna do is we're gonna switch these guys around. And we'll make sure these aren't spinning. Do that. There we go. You always want to make sure that these guys are in sync with each other. If one's spinning and then you place the other one, uh, they'll be funky. One will be going at one time and the other one won't and you won't be able to fix it. So you got to make sure they're uh, they're stationary when you're placing the new ones after you press those buttons a bunch of times. And again, try to get it as close to the center as you can. When you see that thing light up yellow, that means you're pretty much in the center. I don't know if it's like an exact science or what, but yeah, it works. All right, so here we have the, our little craft here. We hit zero and our little dudes start spinning. So that's good. Everything seems to work. And now is when the weight tool comes into play. So as you can see here, this thing starts out at 15,000 pounds and you could probably make it work with that. So you would just have to apply a lot of thrust. That's just not reasonable. We are gonna set it to 400 because that's what I set the other one to. 
500 would work just as well. Four or 500 seems to be the weight of most vehicles in Gary's Mod. And you'll see these are all 40. So do a little bit of maths here. And you got 160 plus the 400. You got 560 going on there. Oh, I think I remember what I did. I think I originally had it set to 500 and then I lowered it. Um, so actually, yeah, we're going to set it to 500. Because I do remember that being the case. And then we'll lower it if we want. So we'll set it to 500. And we got 160 plus 500. That makes 660. And we're going to put a thruster at each tip of each propeller. So that's eight. So you want to divide that 660 by eight. 660 divided by eight is 82.5. We're gonna set them to just straight up 85. And that'll give us a little bit of extra boost because these things, uh, the thrusters themselves do have weight. You do kind of have to account for that, but I'm barely going to account for that. I don't really give that much of a shit. We're going to hit toggle on these because we want these to always run. This is just going to be like the baseline. I guess you could call it collective. This is going to be the baseline collective, just kind of like not even a hovering state, but like a slow descent type of deal. You'll see, you'll, you'll see how it works out. And of course, we're going to set that to zero. And again, we're going to set the reverse to something that we're probably never going to use. Um, so we'll do scroll lock again. And we want it to be the same as those because we want it to just be on whenever it's spinning pretty much. Okay. And then we're going to just make sure it's not spinning. So we got zero forward, reverse, scroll lock. That's pretty much good. Uh, you don't really need any effects. You can put effects if you want it to make a sound or something. But I don't really recommend that. It's kind of silly. And we're going to stop these things just so... Uh, we can get really, really accurate placements on them. Um, but again, it's it's going to be pretty much impossible to get it 100% accurate just because of the obscure shape. But what I do is I pretty much just aim for this corner here where these, uh, these two faces meet. Uh, I just kind of aim for that corner and click away. And again, you're going to put one on each tip of each blade of each propeller. All right, so once you got that done, you can test your progress here um, by just hitting zero. And you can see it starts spinning. It doesn't really take off, but if you drop it, it'll kind of slowly descend. Oh yeah, that falls pretty slow. You can kind of see the difference here. When we do that, then we turn it off and it just kind of... And again, it's not really meant to like hover. It's just meant to be kind of like a baseline amount of thrust. All right, so for this next part, we're gonna undo the toggle, and this is gonna be our up and down collective, more or less. It's pretty much the only way to describe it, but you're gonna set this to something that's comfortable to use while you're flying. I originally had it set to page up and page down, which meant that I had to bring my left hand over to use page up and page down while I use the, the number keys to fly, and that worked somewhat decently, but I'm gonna try it differently. I'm gonna set my up to plus, and my down to enter. And here's where you might need to do a little bit of trial and error. I actually don't remember what I set these to, but I think I actually set them to about half. We'll try 330, because that's half of the 660. One on the bottom here, um, on front and back. And this is cheating. This I know this is cheating. This is imaginary lift. But the idea here is to just kind of simulate the experience. And this is just the simplest way of doing it. Turn this on and you'll see. Uh, still, well, let's see if setting it to 400 actually helps. So yeah, as you can see here, this is where the trial and error kind of comes in. Uh, so what we'll actually do is... We'll just set them to a thousand. Why not? Not very mathematical, but like I said, trial and error is your friend. You just do it until you got the amount of imaginary collective that you want, you know? There we go. Oh, and that's actually pretty decent. That's, uh, it's not too fast, and it's actually pretty re re realistic. It's not too bad. I think I can live with that. So once you've tuned your collective to about where you want it, um, it's time to kind of decide where you want the front of your vehicle to be. And that'll be dictated by where you're about to place these thrusters. The first one you're gonna be placing, and we'll try setting it back to 660, because you don't want these to be too strong, because um, then it won't be very realistic. Eight and five, these are gonna be our forward and backwards lean because this is gonna be a vehicle that we steer by leaning it. And you're not gonna place it, 
you're not going to place it like completely on the flat surface. You're going to place it kind of on this surface or on this surface. I think I did it on this surface before. And that's kind of where I would recommend doing it. So that way it not only pushes you forward, but it also like tilts the vehicle as you will hopefully see here. See how it leans forward and it goes forward too. That's pretty much exactly what you want. You should also be able to tilt it backwards. So that looks pretty healthy. Set it to 750. There we go, that's a little better. So once you're happy with that, it is time for your pitch, I believe. Is that what it's called? What is it, pitch? Yaw, and I don't fucking know. But it's it's your, your tilty turny. Not your rotate turny, but your tilty turny. And for that, we're gonna use six and four. And we are actually gonna tone these down probably to about 500 because they are gonna be on both sides. When you press six, you want the left side to go up and the right side to go down. So we're gonna put these on the left side even though they are for the right turn. And these you're gonna place here and here, obviously. Then we're gonna switch a Rooney, put some on the other side. Very simple, right? So give it another test. So we got our forward and our backwards, kinda. Oh wow, our tilty turny is way tilty. Fucking, I don't know, 175? These seem to be really powerful for some reason. All right, let's see how that works out. That's pretty strong, but uh, it's not too bad. Eh, it's not too bad. I can live with that. So once you've done that, you're pretty much almost done. We only have one more degree of rotation, and that's your uh, your rotatey mabobs. And for these, I like to use 9 and 7, so we're going to set it like that. We'll, I think we'll keep the 175. That should actually be pretty decent. And these are going to be on opposing corners, so what you're going to do is have... And these you can actually like line up pretty precisely, which is nice. Um, you're going to do opposite corners like that. And then you're going to switch a Rooney. Then your craft should be done. So let's see, how does that work out? Oh yeah, that's decent. That works. So basically that would be the final step would be putting a seed on it. Now again, you got to remember that you are also going to have some weight, you the player, as well as whatever seat you have on there. But again, just make sure that it's completely centered and you should be fine. Let's see how this does with me on it. So let's get a little bit of height here, huh? Why not? All right, here we go. So yeah, you tilt forward to go, basically. You can do a little bit of rotatingness there too, you know? Or you can just straight up put a camera on it. Uh, you could put like a turret on it. You could do all sorts of things with this. And again, this is just like a base baseline model. You could make a much more complex vehicle. You could add like turrets, like a cargo system, all sorts of stuff. Possibilities are honestly kind of endless if you think about it. And these things are actually pretty maneuverable if you figure out how to fly them. They are a pretty like complex beast to fly because um, when I when I make my my things I try to simulate you know airplanes and helicopters as much as I can um, and that includes simulating the complex movements of a helicopter so I mean if you're not if you're not used to the dynamics of flying a helicopter this will actually be a somewhat challenging vehicle for you to fly even though it is a drone and drones are supposed to kind of just fly themselves, this is to me more so like a four-rotored helicopter than it is a drone. But nonetheless, this method will apply to helicopters, airplanes, drones. It's just kind of a matter of how and where you place your thrusters. You kind of have to think of thrusters as more than just little rockets. I mean, they're just... They're a vector of thrust, you know, so I mean a propeller has a vector of thrust and you can use the thrusters to generate that thrust. Having flown a helicopter or a or an airplane, whether in real life or in a simulation, is going to really help with engineering your own flying crafts in Gary's Mod because a lot of it is going to be trial and error, so you're basically just going to be messing around with stuff until it feels similar to experiences that you've had in simulators, you know? 
So anyways, that's about it for this video. Hopefully it wasn't too long. Try to get as in-depth as I could with this. I might try to design an actual like two rotored helicopter, whether it's like a Chinook design or like the standard uh, main rotor and tail rotor type design. Uh, we'll see. I'd like to create some sort of realistic-ish helicopter using similar methods to this. I have yet to design that, but I, I, I probably will make a video once I do make that design. But anyways, Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys found this useful in your own crazy inventions. And if you did enjoy the video, make sure you leave a like. It definitely helps me out. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to this channel to check out any more of this type of content or any of my other gaming content for that matter. With that being said, this has been Plock the Master Gamer with some Gary's Mod, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.